Welcome to the final edition of our video history of Leicester City as told through its memorabilia and its archives. This time we're looking at the King Power era, the decade from 2010 to 2020. This was the best decade in the club's history. It was a decade in which the club was utterly transformed. In the summer of 2010, Nigel Pearson left the club to manage Hull City and he was replaced by Swansea City's manager, the former Portuguese international Paulo Sousa. Shortly afterwards, in August 2010, Leicester City announced that a consortium led by King Power chairman Vishay Srivadana Prabha had acquired the club. He became chairman six months later. His son Iowat, better known as Top, became the vice chairman. The King Power takeover transformed the club. In October 2010, with Leicester City bottom of the championship, Paolo Sosa was replaced as manager by Sven Joran Eriksson, the ex-England manager. The club then went on a tour to Thailand during the international break, winning this trophy. The following season, after finishing a disappointing 10th, the squad was strengthened by the signings, amongst others, of Kasper Schmeichel, Paul Koncheski and David Nugent. At the start of the season, in July 2011, the stadium was renamed and rebranded King Power Stadium in time to host a prestigious pre-season friendly against Jose Mourinho's Real Madrid. Leicester City lost 2-1 in front of a crowd of 32,188, which was a record for the newly named King Power Stadium. However, the season started disappointingly. After winning only five of his first 16 games, Sven Joran Eriksson left the club by mutual consent. Nigel Pearson returned as manager, and he set about preparing a team to gain promotion to the Premier League. The 2012 2013 season kicked off with new signings such as Richie Delat, Anthony Knockhart, Matty James and Jamie Vardy, pictured here scoring his first ever goal for the club. In December, New Zealand international Chris Wood was signed and he had an immediate impact, scoring six goals in his first three games. In February, with Leicester City riding high in the championship, Nigel Pearson won the Manager of the Month award and then Leicester suffered an inexplicable slump winning only three of their last 16 league games. During this period, King Power secured the stadium for the club by purchasing it from its previous owners. When May arrived, a dramatic injury time goal by Anthony Knockhart against Nottingham Forest with almost the last kick of the season secured Leicester City a 3-2 victory and a semi-final place in the playoffs for a place in the Premier League against Gianfranco Zola's Watford. In the first leg of the playoff semi-finals, David Nugent's 82nd minute headed goal secured a 1-0 victory for Leicester City in front of a near capacity home crowd. But in the second leg, with almost the last kick of the match, Anthony Knockhart missed a penalty which would have won the tie for Leicester. The miss was immediately followed by a Watford counter-attack resulting in Troy Deeney scoring at the other end. Watford won the tie 3-2 on aggregate. Leicester's promotion bid was over for another season. The following season, Nigel Pearson's Leicester City were promoted to the Premier League after a 10-year gap when they won the championship title very convincingly. At the beginning of the season, the squad was strengthened by Dean Hammond, Marcin Vasilevsky, pictured here, and Gary Taylor Fletcher. These are all signed to add experience to the first team squad. In December, the home game against promotion rivals Burnley, the teams are being led out here at the beginning of that game, uh, began a 21 match unbeaten run which was a club record at this level. In, this, in January 2014, a key signing, Algerian Riyad Mahrez, pictured here, signed from La Havre. Also that month, 
Kevin Phillips became the club's oldest debut player in a Magitellan Road at the age of 40 years, 177 days. In February, the city set two new club records, nine consecutive league wins and five consecutive away wins, with a 1-0 win at Bournemouth, where Kevin Phillips became the oldest ever marksman for the club, which prompted this Zimmer frame celebration. By April, promotion to the Premier League was confirmed with six games still to play, which was the Foxes' earliest ever confirmation of promotion. Later that month, City's 1-0 win at Bolton, with a goal from Lloyd Dyer, clinched the Football League Championship title with two games remaining. And in May, the iconic and historic Football League trophy held here by strikers David Nugent and Jamie Vardy, was presented to the team in front of a capacity crowd at King Power Stadium in their last home game of the season, following a 1-0 victory over Doncaster Rovers. This was the 30th win of the season, which was a club record, as was the final tally of 102 points. Two days later, fans lined High Street, Gallagher Gate, the Town Hall Square and Granby Street to acclaim the chairman, the vice chairman, the manager, the team and the coaching staff as they showed off the trophy on their celebratory open top bus tour. The 2014-2015 season then was Leicester City's first season back in the Premier League for 10 years and it's gone down in the club's history as the season of the great escape. Close season signings included Mark Albrighton seen here and for a reported record fee of Leonardo Ajoa from Brighton, seen here scoring in the opening fixture against Everton, a two-all draw at King Power Stadium. By the end of August, Leicester had signed Esteban Cambiasso from Inter Milan. Now he was a world famous player, he'd won 21 titles um, during his career, Argentinian international. And his arrival at Leicester was seen as quite a remarkable coup. In September, there was a famous victory against Manchester United when, despite being 3-1 down with only half an hour to go, the club won 5-3 with two goals from Ajoa, one a penalty, a penalty from Nugent, and goals from Cambiasso and Vardy sealing that victory. Then there was a horrendous run. In the next 13 games, Leicester drew two and lost 11. The club went to the bottom of the table in November and stayed there. In the new year, the squad was strengthened with the signings of Andrei Kramaric and Robert Huth, but with nine games to go, Leicester had only 19 points from 29 games and there were seven points adrift from safety. And this is where the great escape took place. Starting in the week that Richard III was interred at Leicester Cathedral, Leicester won seven and drew one of their last nine games, amassing a further 22 points and finishing 14th. This was heralded as a miracle, although the following season was to surpass this. The highlights of the great escape were Andy King's late winner against West Ham, which started the run. There was Vardy's last minute winner at West Brom, there were further wins against Swansea, Burnley, Southampton. Safety was assured at Sunderland when there was a 0-0 draw. And then there was a 5-1 defeat at um, Queen's Park Rangers on the last match of the season in front of a capacity home crowd. This great escape was quite remarkable. What was to follow the following season was even more remarkable. The following season, 2004. 2015-2016 was the greatest season in the club's history. It was the season when, as 5,000 to 1 outsiders, they won the Premier League title. The season started with a new manager, Claudio Ranieri. He set quite a modest high, um, target for the club, which was to achieve 40 points in order to avoid relegation. The season started very well, though, with a 4-2 victory at home over Sunderland, and the substitute who came on for that match was a new signing called Angoli Kante, who went on to become an absolute key factor in the club winning the title that season. In September, 
There was a blip when they lost 5-2 at home to Arsenal, but the club only lost twice more for the rest of the season as they went on to win the title. In November, Jamie Vardy broke a Premier League record by scoring in 11 successive games. The record-breaking goal was a goal against Manchester United. In December, there was a Boxing Day defeat at Anfield, which was the first time that season they'd failed to score. It was only their second defeat of the season. But they went into the new year, top of the table, level on points with Arsenal. In January, there was a key win at White Hart Lane against title challengers Tottenham Hotspur. There was a great point-blank save from Schmeichel. There was a goal by Huth. It was a vital 1-0 win. At the end of January, Leicester were three points clear at the top. The bubble hadn't burst, as many pundits had predicted. In February, there were successive games against Liverpool, Manchester City and Arsenal. In the game against Liverpool at home, Vardy's outrageous half volley over Mignolet into the top right-hand corner was memorable. And then there was the game at Manchester City. They were title favourites. In the third minute, Huth scored from a Mares free kick. Three minutes into the second half, County passed to Mares, who rode a tackle, fainted round a Manchester City defender before firing in a fantastic shot. And then the City went 3-0 up, with Huth scoring a second goal. Leicester won 3-1. The title really looked a distinct possibility. People now began to consider Leicester as serious title contenders. On Valentine's Day, Leicester lost their third game of the season at Arsenal and had already beaten them earlier on. Vardy put Leicester ahead with a penalty in the first half. In the second half, Simpson was sent off for two harsh yellow cards. Ten Man City hung on until Vasilevsky conceded a free kick, which was taken by Ozil for Welbeck to score in the dying seconds of the game. The defeat against Arsenal, though, was the final defeat of the season. It was a blip. It was only the third defeat of the season. The very next game, Leicester won 1 0 against Norwich City at home, and Joa's goal was created was greeted with such acclaim by the crowd that it registered the noise of the crowd registered on the Richter scale. At the end of the month, Leicester were two points ahead of Spurs at the top of the table. In March, there were a series of wins, four out of five of them were 1 0 wins. Uh, a highlight was Okazaki's. Spectacular overhead kick against Newcastle when he scored. And another highlight was when the crowd refused to leave uh, Selhurst Park after another victory there, with them staying on the terraces, singing and acclaiming Leicester's likely win, title win. By mid-April, Leicester were 10 points clear at the top of the table. And then we entered May. On the 1st of May, Leicester City went to Old Trafford. Wes Morgan equalised. It was a one-all draw. The following day, May the 2nd, was the day that Leicester won the title. They weren't playing. The players were at Jamie Vardy's house. The fans were glued to the television and the radio. Chelsea were playing Tottenham, who were Leicester's closest rivals. Tottenham went 2-0 up, but then Chelsea pulled it back to 2 all and Aidan Hazard's goal, even though he was a Chelsea player, will always go down in Leicester City's history because that goal secured the draw that assured Leicester City of the Premier League title. At the end of the game, the whole city erupted. Thousands of fans gathered around the stadium and in the city centre. Celebrations went on all night. Leicester City were Premier League champions. The celebrations continued throughout the week and on the Saturday, the last home game of the season against Everton, the scenes around the stadium and inside the stadium and around the city were utterly memorable. There were day-long celebrations on that Saturday. There was a mixture of bright sunshine and downpours of rain. Thousands of fans gathered outside the stadium 
many without tickets from all over the world. There was the unforgettable sight in the stadium of the world-famous Italia, Italian opera singer Andrea Bocelli standing on a platform next to manager Claudio Ranieri singing opera classics Nessun Dorma and Conte Partiro. The highlight of that particular performance was when he revealed a Leicester City shirt as he was singing these, as his world famous singer was singing these operatic classics. A plane flew overhead with a banner behind it saying, had a hunch we would win, Richard III. The Everton players had a guard of honour for the Leicester City players. Vardy scored after five minutes. He then added a penalty and Andy King also scored in a 3-1 win over Everton. At the end of the game, amid huge acclamation from the crowd, Birch, the club lifelong ambassador, walked out with a trophy for it to present it to, for it to be presented to the team. There was then the utterly memorable trophy lift as the team received the trophy and their medals and in the midst of confetti and fireworks, lifted the trophy again to the crowd's acclamation. The following Saturday, Leicester's final game of the season was at Chelsea, at Stamford Bridge. Chelsea were the previous season's champions. They too honoured Leicester City with a guard of honour. It was a particularly poignant day for Claudio Ranieri, who had been Chelsea's manager a few years earlier. The game ended in a one-all draw with Drinkwater, Danny Drinkwater, scoring a 25-yard equaliser. Leicester City, at the end of the game, had won the title by 10 points. There then followed the famous open-top bus tour through Leicester a few days later. 240,000 people crowded into the streets around the city to acclaim the team on the open top bus cavalcade and the open top bus tour ended at Victoria Park where there was a massive crowd again adding to the celebrations. It had been a truly remarkable season. The world's media was totally transfixed by this story as well as the team winning the title and winning the Sporting Personality of the Year award for Team of the Year you can see the trophy here there were individual honours for the players too Jamie Vardy was the Premier League Player of the Season and the Football Writers Association Player of the Year Riyad Mahrez was the PFA Player of the Year and the African player of the year, the African footballer of the year. The whole city of Leicester was in the world spotlight for this remarkable achievement of winning the Premier League. In the close season, following their Premier League title win, Leicester City were invited to participate in the prestigious International Champions Cup with the likes of Real Madrid and Barcelona, Juventus, Inter Milan, Borussia Dortmund, Bayern Munich, Manchester United, Manchester City, all the top sides. They played Celtic in Glasgow, they played Paris Saint-Germain in Los Angeles and they played Barcelona in Stockholm. This was the most hectic pre-season programme ever in the club's history. As Premier League champions, they also played against FA Cup winners Manchester United in the traditional curtain raiser for the season, the FA Community Shield at Wembley in August 2016. Leicester had won this trophy in 1971, but on this occasion Manchester United won 2-1. As Premier League champions, they also, of course, qualified for the Champions League. This tombstone trophy details the badges of the clubs that were in that season's competition. This is currently on display in the club's trophy cabinet and Leicester City were top seeds in a group which involved Club Brugge, FC Copenhagen and FC Porto. Leicester City's first ever Champions League goal was scored by Mark Albrighton in the away leg at Brugge 
His boots are now on display in reception at King Power Stadium. Leicester City came top of their group, which meant that they qualified for the round of 16 due to be played in the new year. In January, Leicester City signed Wilfred Ndidi for £15 million from Genk and he became an incredibly effective player in subsequent seasons. In February, the club beat Sevilla in the Champions League round of 16. The first leg was away and Leicester lost 2-1, but Vardy scored a vital away goal and Smeichel scored a penalty. Craig Shakespeare took over and the club climbed the table with Shakespeare winning his first five Premier League matches. He also won the second leg at home against Sevilla, with Morgan and Albrighton scoring. The atmosphere at King Power Stadium that night was brilliant. It was added to by a huge TIFO banner with the words, let slip the dogs of war. This was in reference to Shakespeare's name because the words come from Shakespeare's play spoken by Mark Antony, Shakespeare's play being Julius Caesar. Leicester City were now in the quarter-finals of the Champions League where they met Atletico Madrid. It was a close run thing. They lost 1-0 in Madrid and drew one all at home with Vardy scoring and Schmeichel saving another penalty. It was a huge achievement for the club to reach the last eight of the Champions League after the tie, Atletico presented Leicester City with this gift, a model of their Vicente, uh, Vicente Calderon Stadium, which actually has since been demolished. The 2018-2019 season turned out to be the darkest, most tragic season in the club's history. In time for this season, Puel made four excellent signings. These were Ricardo, Johnny Evans, James Madison, and Chaglo Sayunchu, who all became key players in subsequent games. The season, though, was dominated by the tragedy of the helicopter crash near the stadium. This followed a match against West Ham. Taking off from the stadium after the game, the helicopter crashed, and the chairman, Kun Vishai, the two pilots, and two passengers were killed. The outpouring of grief was huge. It was the darkest day in the club's history. Fans from all over the football world left, left masses of tributes outside the stadium. There were over 5,000 shirts, 5,000 scarves, thousands of toys, thousands of messages and flowers. These have all been carefully preserved. Many thousands also signed the books of condolence. Tributes were also laid at the site of the crash. Today, a beautiful memorial garden has been built on the site of the crash. The chairman's contributions with his, charitable, with his charitable donations, not only to the football club, but also to the city of Leicester, were immense. The following Saturday, Leicester beat Cardiff at Cardiff, and the Cardiff crowd paid moving tribute to the chairman. And then the staff went to Bangkok to attend the first part of the chairman's funeral. For the first home match after the tragedy, thousands of fans marched from the centre of Leicester to the ground as a mark of respect before the game. The march was led by some of the players. Also, many of the shirts which had been left as tributes outside the stadium were laid out around the pitch for the game. Later, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge visited Leicester and paid their respects by visiting the crash site. In February, Brendan Rodgers replaced Claude Puel as manager. And in March 2019, the Leicester City players and staff went to Bangkok to pay their respects on the occasion of the chairman's cremation. The club once again finished the season in ninth place, just missing out on European qualification. In the close season, Harry Maguire left for Manchester United, but his place had been superbly filled by the Turkey international Chagla Soyuncu. 
If 2018-2019 had been the most tragic season in the club's history, 2019-2020 was the strangest due to the COVID-19 pandemic. This current season has seen the club in third position in the Premier League for most of the time, pushing hard for Champions League qualification. The team also reached the semi-final of the League Cup and the quarter-finals of the FA Cup. However, the lockdown of the nation due to the COVID-19 pandemic saw football suspended on March 7th, 2020 for over three months. It was not resumed until June the 17th, 2020. For the first time in Football League and Premier League history, the rescheduled games were played behind closed doors in COVID-secure stadia. And the domestic football season lasted until August. Leicester City's first home behind closed doors match was against Brighton on June the 23rd. There were two very noteworthy events during the 2019-2020 season. Jamie Vardy scored his 100th Premier League goal against Crystal Palace on July the 4th, a remarkable achievement as he didn't play in the Premier League until he was 27. And he... Also at the end of the season, Andy King will leave the club after 14 years, during which he made nearly 400 appearances, won 50 caps for Wales and became the only player in history really to win the League One title, the Championship title and the Premier League title with the same club. Meanwhile, Chairman Coon Top is building on his father's legacy. Plans for an expansion of the stadium are well advanced and the new 180 acre world class 100 million pound training complex near Seagrave in North Leicestershire is nearing completion. So that concludes our 11 part video history of Leicester City as told through its archives and its memorabilia. It's been quite a journey. But thanks to the owners, vision and commitment to the club since the King Power takeover 10 years ago, Leicester City Football Club has been transformed and reached heights which had been unimaginable. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.